Hi, my name is Jacqueline Carmichael, and I'm an actor. After high school, I went, came down to Los Angeles and went to the Pasadena Playhouse College of Theater Arts. It was an accredited college, and you could get a Bachelor of Theater Arts and a Master's of Theater Arts, which, in case you wanted to teach, if you couldn't make it as an actor, you had a backup. It was a fantastic school. Um, we learned fencing from an Olympic champion. We had dance three days a week from a, an accredited ballerina. We had classes in Shakespeare and the history of theater. We did plays every six weeks with directors that worked in television. There was even a television section where we got to practice television. Um, I worked on my master's. You had, I had to direct a show. I did the Red Shoes, and I had dancing and acting and music, and I had to design and build my own sets. Around that time, I got cast in a national television show, and then I suddenly started going out more and more auditions and started picking up more and more work. I did Perry Mason, uh, Love American Style, so my master's kind of was put on the back burner. And so during my young younger years, I worked a lot in many uh, television shows that are still being broadcast. In fact, I got a... a uh, a residual. I couldn't believe it. Apparently it was shown on an airplane. I got it for uh, Petticoat Junction. <laughs> Probably the best way I learned to act was I got my start doing soap operas. Uh, I did two soap operas. The first one was Paradise Bay. And I basically played a character who didn't have a father, fought with her mother, took up with an older man after breaking up with her boyfriend by slamming his hand in a car door. The, the older man seduced her, and so she drowned herself. I want to know what it's like to walk into Malibu Beach in October after a rainy season. We got early rain then. And drown yourself. It was like put my foot in the water and... I thought I was going to die. I didn't have to walk in two feet. It was awful. After that soap was off, was over, uh, I went on to another soap opera called Never Too Young, and I played a girl who didn't have a father, fought with her mother, broke up with her boyfriend by breaking a bottle over his head, took up with an older man, got seduced, or he tried to seduce her, and in the process, she killed him. So I went on trial for murder for a good part of the soap opera. We, it was interesting at that time because we all wore bikinis, but because of the um, standards at the time, you couldn't show a navel on daytime television, so we wear our bikinis with uh, sweaters tied around us so that our navel was covered up. The set was a kids hang out at the beach, and the network, in its inimitable wisdom, built the backdrop of this wonderful beach with glitters to make it look like that the ocean was glittering, facing north. So very rarely was the beach in sun, because we would tape these segments at 8 in the morning. Now, if they built it facing south, we would have had this wonderful sunny backdrop. They brought in tons and tons of sand. And at this kid's hangout, the, it was called Alfie's Place, they would bring in the rock and roll uh, chart toppers of the time, one or two acts a week. So there was always somebody coming in. Uh, Kenny Rogers in the first edition, that kind of, of, of people would come in. So, so, and we were also number one in daytime television from uh, in places where it, it, they put us on at 4 o'clock, we were number one. Places they put us on at 2.30, we didn't do well. Eventually the series was canceled because of the overall ratings where if they had put us on at different times, we would have been good. But the one thing that came out of the show was I was privileged to do the first one-woman show in the history of daytime television. 
it had to do with the murder scene after I killed the man who tried to, to seduce me. I ran to Elfie's place and got locked in, so I spent a half an hour getting hysterical <laughs> trying to get out. So the whole show was about me, except for the last line when Elfie came to open the door and let me out, and his one word was joy. And, of course, he got top billing. <laughs> so that is the life of a soap opera. But because you... Oh, another thing about our soap opera, we had no cue cards. So you had to learn your, your own part and maybe somebody else's part because if you got into trouble and we only had the cameras for a certain length of time, they wouldn't stop the camera. You had to learn your lines, everybody else's lines, and if somebody forgot somebody something, you'd throw their line in, then you'd go on. I can remember once we had an actor who was used, a feature film actor who was used to doing two or three pages a day, got a script handed with 24 pages, of which he had 10, and freaked out, which necessitated the stage manager getting underneath the camera and throwing the lines to the actor so he could get through the day and we wouldn't have to stop camera. Only once did I ever see them stop camera, and that's when three actors were sitting around a table, and one actor looked in the camera and said, do you have any good ideas because we don't? And so they stopped the camera and had to restart. But even once when one of the cameras ran into some furniture and it shook the camera, they, it was in, they didn't take it out. It, we had that... We had to have those cameras out of there by 4.30, not 4.40, 4.30. So they made sure that we were done and finished and wrapped at 4.30, no matter what went on. When you live in Los Angeles as an actor, you tend to do three kinds of acting. There's film, there's television, and the stage. And all three are totally different, and you get completely different reactions doing each one. When you're doing theater, you get to spend four to six weeks rehearsing. You get to feel the audience's reaction to what you're doing, and you know when you're doing well and you know when you're not doing well because you can, you can literally feel the energy of connection with them. Television is slightly different again. It's quick. It's fast. You get your sides maybe the day before, depending on if you're doing a co-star or a guest star. You go in there the next day, you maybe will have two shots at it and then move on to something else. So it's very, very quick. And basically, you're not sure how you did because the director doesn't usually tell you other than cut and thanks, that's fine. Feature films, much slower pace. You do two or three pages a day. Uh, it takes longer to cast. You usually have table reads, you go over things before you shoot it. So it's like theater, except you don't have the feel back of the audience. You kind of maybe will feel that the crew is reacting. I think the best compliment I ever got in my entire life was from one of the soaps I did. We had a, um, a grip named Jimmy Getz. Jimmy had no voice. He used a little microphone, but normally he never used it. He would just direct what he wanted. When I did my one-woman show, and this man had, was in his 70s, so he had been in the business for 40, 50 years, he came up to me and he put his little microphone next to his throat and told me how wonderful I did, how great I did, and to me, of all the compliments I have ever received in my life, you get them from family and friends, this one compliment meant more to me than any other I have ever received in my life. They always talk about, are you typecast? And when I started working, I seemed to be typed as the bad girl or the nasty girl. Uh, I went out on one part, which I did get, uh, for a TV show called Lori Hill, and I went out for the Bean German Babysitter, and the casting director told me to go home and work on my German because I was absolutely perfect for this part because I had such mean eyes. 
and <laughs> I didn't know what to say other than, okay, I'll go home and, and work on my part. And my daughter said, did you hit him? But I've done, I found my new niche apparently is creepy. Um, I guess it's the eyes. I've done two or three very, very creepy parts. I've had casting directors when I've read for them say, I'm not going to argue with you. The odd part of it is, my one love is comedy. I love to do comedy, and apparently I do it very well, but when I get called in, it's because of the evil, the mean, or the creepy eyes. So I want to do more comedy. Anybody out there is a casting director, I love comedy, please. <laughs> Probably two stand out. When I was working the series, Never Too Young, it was because I was part of a family and I got to go to work every day and I, you never knew what twists and turns the plot was going to take because they never told you. You maybe would know a week ahead. So that obviously was my favorite. Another role I did was on Laurie Hill because I was the main German babysitter and the series was a comedy even though my part was less than comedic. So when I think about all of the things I've done, oh yes, I did one called uh, a short film that won a lot of awards called Unit 30, where I got to play a Betty White type character who happily and joyfully killed the renters. And that was fun. What do I look for? I just heard Blenda Blethen, who's doing a series called Vera right now, say, I don't care what I look like on camera because if you do, it prevents you from getting the really interesting parts. I look for a character that's interesting. I don't care if she's beautiful or has no makeup on or has, you know, no teeth. If the character's interesting, if it's fun to do, it's as long as it's not morally offensive. Um, any character that's got several layers to them. I mean, you can take a totally evil character and you can still make them somebody you root for. Uh, Richard Gere did it in uh, Arbitrage. Uh, the character was not a nice character at all and yet you still kind of rooted for him because he had several layers. You, that's the kind of character I want that has Nobody's completely good, nobody's completely evil. We all have shades of gray, and I'm looking for a character that has a lot of shades of gray to them. What kind of part would I like to do? I've done so many bad parts or creepy parts. I would love to play a crazy mother on a sitcom. Somebody that, um, I'm trying to think, oh, that... Oh, kind of like the kind that Lily Tomlin is doing now in Malibu, or Holland Taylor does on Two and a Half Men. Uh, Holland, you kind of like them, but you don't like them, but they're kind of crazy. That, that's, that's what I'd like to do. That's my ambition. Well, almost every actor I know is a writer. They write things for themselves. But my form of writing is just kind of fun. I don't write it for me. Uh, I write what is called dog roll, which is rhyming. It's kind of like Dr. Seuss rhyming. Uh, I do my Christmas cards. I, I outline everything I've done for the entire year in, in, in rhyme. Uh, I've done it for friends. If, maybe if you have a 20th anniversary, you give me the history of up, you know, your engagement and your marriage and your 20th anniversary, and I'll write you two, three, four pages of, of dog roll. That is my sort of only other talent. <laughs> like, I mean, I appreciate people that write. I, I have a, a stepdaughter named Linda Palmer who writes under that name and also writes under the name of Melinda Wells, and she writes mysteries. The first series she wrote under Linda Palmer, the main character was the head writer of a soap opera. And the one she's doing now, the head writer is, a, I'm sorry, the main character is a Rachel Ray type character. And uh, there are recipes in the back of the book. In fact, her last book, the last book that was published, she's got one coming out next year, 
because we thought it was going to be her last of the series, I come from a town called Nanaimo, British Columbia, and besides the international bathtub races, we are known for a wonderful Christmas treat. Sometimes you can buy them at Ralph's called Nanaimo Bars. Uh, during the Olympics, Chris Erskine wrote in his column, he thought that Nanaimo Bars were a better brownie. They're sort of like 10,000 calories a square, but they're wonderful. So that recipe is in the back of her book. And uh, I just i am amazed that people come up with wonderful ideas. I wish I had the talent other than just writing crazy dog wool pieces. <laughs> well, sometimes actors have to suffer for their art. And I was privileged to do Love American Style with the lovely, lovely late Davy Jones. And he was in a window, and I was on a ladder that was against the window, climbing in the window. The only problem was the ladder I was on was two feet high. I had to kneel on, on the step, which cut into my knees, and my feet were on the floor, and I had to balance like that while delivering these lovely lines to this lovely man, and it really hurt, and I was trying to be smile and be all sweet and ignore the pain that was going on in my knees. Well, right now in my life, I've got two projects coming out. Uh, both are feature films. Uh, one is called uh, Into the Equinox. It's about a group of people who go to Alaska, and it was filmed in Alaska. Unfortunately, I didn't go. And about this legend of this thing that's out there. And I mean, I, I read the script, and I got goosebumps re reading the script. That's how creepy the script was. Um, after I did the trailer, they called me in and asked me to play the bartender. I don't really didn't really see myself being a bartender, but the bartender's job is to tell the legend, and it's a long legend. And it the difficulty was it's written, I guess I would term in legendese. It's very specific kind of language that doesn't necessarily flow the way that. It, you do when you're talking. So it was difficult to say, but very, very challenging to do and make it as scary and as creepy as I possibly could. And this, that's, this should be out um, either next this month or next month. It was such a fun project. The people on it were just lovely. And it, it, if you like horror films, you will love this horror film. The other one I have a small part in, and it's um, Me Without You, and it's in post-production right now. I'm not sure when it's coming out. Again, it's an independent film. So that's what I've got upcoming at the moment. It was really nice visiting with you, and thank you for taking the time to watch me. If you'd like to know more about what I'm doing, you can visit me at JacquelineCarmichael.com.